ื่อใหม่นะศูนย์วิจัยทรัพยากรทางทะเลและชายฝั่งทะเลอนามันตอนบนเลยนะครับก็คือโดยภารกิจของพี่ทั้งหมดมีด้วยกัน3ข้อข้อที่1คือการสำรวจประเมินสถานภาพสัตว์ทะเลหายากในฝั่งอนามันนะครับอันที่2ก็คือการอนุบาลสัตว์ทะเลหายากใกล้ศูนย์พันนะครับแล้วก็จะมีเป็นอีกเรื่องที่3ซึ่งอันนี้เป็นความลับอยู่นะครับ Um, the most important things you learn is that the underwater world is very sensitive. So even changes like in temperature, if you change temperature by 0.1 degrees, it will have massive impact on the reef. Um, a reef is a living organism. It's an animal. It looks like a plant, but it's basically an animal. Uh, and the disadvantage of this animal is it cannot move. Um, a reef can't walk away. A reef basically is stuck where it is. And the animal has to live where it is. So um, compared to your living, if you're living in a house and your house is on fire, you can walk out. Um, a reef animal can't do that. So basically, it has to cope with all the circumstances around it. And if the circumstances are negative in terms of acidity, temperature, or as you look after uh, microplastic or plastic impact, uh, it cannot walk away. So it has to cope with it, and very often it cannot. Um, so the way of the nature to cope with things is variation or mutation, uh, like Darwin would say. But a mutation would take too long, so it takes ages. Uh, new organisms have to be created and have to change their uh, adaptation. So very often old um, structures are not able to adapt. And what we see underwater in this very few years we've been in a young, so six years, uh, we see a takeover of um, different algae, of different uh, reef organisms, uh, which have not been there before, but which are tremendously spreading. Because these specific algae, they can cope with the changing circumstances and the old reef living organisms cannot. So this is what you can see in a very, very short time. Uh, by just looking at things and um, making making documentation about what you see, um, that these organisms are very very sensitive to changes, uh, even to small changes, as they may seem to us very small, but for them they are very very high impact, and they cannot walk away from it. So very often they will basically have to give way to other organisms. Basically means they will die. So, uh, what do you think is like the biggest problem in like in The marine for our, like marine life and like in the ocean right now. Yeah, it's a difficult question, but um, it, it also depends on, of course, where you look at things. So in Thailand, for example, um, our highest impact is temperature. So that's our worst problem. If the temperature is rising, um, old species will die from it. New species will take over. Variety goes down sink. Um, this is something we can measure, and we know that it's happening very dramatically. So temperature is our biggest problem in Nayang. Worldwide, the picture is different. You have areas where you have acidity, which is rising. Um, then you have areas with plastic, where you have huge plastic covers on the ocean, which basically prevent the ocean from uh, from breathing, from letting through sunlight, um, or you have areas with lots of microplastic. Uh, which basically lead to the animals uh, dying of it because the plastic is basically viewed as food. So um, um, sea animals are constantly feeding. So if you if you dive in the ocean, you will basically see a lot of life underwater. But when you basically ask yourself, what is this life doing? Uh, there's a lot of fish swimming around. What are they basically doing? They are feeding all the time. So they, they're trying to find something to eat. And uh, plastic is um, very much like food. Starting with big stuff of plastic, like uh, plastic bags. Plastic bags very much look like um, so jellyfish, for example. Jellyfish it looks very much like a plastic bag. So um, most of, no, basically all of the animals we have found on the beach um, dead, like dolphins, uh, like turtles, even whales. When you open up the stomach, you will find lots and lots of plastic bags. Uh, plastic bags cannot be. Dissolved in the stomach, so basically they fill up the stomach and they prevent the animal from digesting other food, and they basically starve to death. So big animals eat big stuff. 
they eat bottles, they eat uh, bags, and they basically die from that. Small animals eat small stuff. So there you come to the microplastic. Small pieces of plastic. Um, if you look at, this, at the animals in the water, there's a lot of, um, of plankton in the water. The so water is a very, very alive, um, alive liquid. So if you put it under the microscope, you will see millions of animals in a drop of water. So what is fish basically doing? It eats this plankton. So there are small pieces of alive plankton in the water and the fish is constantly eating on it. Now, it cannot um, make a difference between a plankton and microplastic. So also it eats microplastic as it eats plankton. It will basically eat everything which is in any way solid in the water. Uh, assuming it's food, because over the last few million years it has always been food. There's never been any microplastic. And it now eats a lot of microplastic. And this microplastic has the same effect on the fish as it has on the large animals. It basically sits in the stomach, um, it makes it unable to digest, it makes it unable to eat other food. Uh, it may even have a negative impact on reproduction, so um, a lot of stuff like that. Uh, this is something you can really witness when you go in and you dive and you would see this animal constantly opening its mouth, trying to catch uh, small blobs of something in the water. Uh, and this something very often nowadays becomes plastic. And that's definitely something which is not a healthy thing to eat. Um, what is the worst type of plastic that you see in the sea? Well, again, that's the thing about seeing. <laughs> a lot of the worst stuff you don't see. Microplastic is there in huge amounts that you don't see it because the microscope is small. Uh, the big stuff you see um, is something like nets. Uh, again, a net is plastic because it's made out of plastic. It's nylon very often. And that's something which we see um, uh, immediately. In, uh, the ghost net has serious and very deadly impact on anything. Uh, ghost nets very often are old fishing nets which are discarded by the fisher boats into the sea because it's broken or they don't need it anymore um, and they just throw it into the sea. Sometimes nets are lost because they're trawled underwater, they get caught in something and they get just cut off from the boat. So nets are something which are large structures. You can even see some from space. Uh, nets are something which underwater grows, uh, cause uh, absolutely devastating effects on reef. Um, if they're pulled over the reef, they break the reef in parts. Um, animals are get caught in it, they can't flee themselves, they die in it. So we've seen many of these in, in, in Thailand. Um, these are, this, this is a kind of plastic uh, very often which is very visible and affects you most because you see basically dead animals in it. Yeah, you see the damage that's done to the reef. Uh, you see all the broken pieces and bits of, of reef which have been growing over thousands of years being destroyed in an instant because um, a net has been pulled over it. So that's the worst kind of plastic we can witness by the eye uh, when you go diving. Uh, so a lot of plastic um, impact like plastic being eaten by fish um, you can't really see until you open the dead body of, a, of an animal and look what it actually has happened. What yeah. do you think people like should do to like help go against this cause? Well, basically, we do two things. One of it is you actually have to get people getting being aware of things. So it helps a lot to uh, take people underwater. That's what we do with the Manta team. So basically, put people underwater to witness what is happening. So the moment you see something for yourself, it becomes much more, um, much more real than when you read it in a book. So be getting people aware is a very important thing. Uh, we go snorkeling with uh, you guys, we go snorkeling with uh, the um, Thai schools, uh, we go diving with people. So um, a lot of things we do basically is education, but uh, education by opening the eyes of the spectator, uh, putting them into the medium and letting them see what's happening. Uh, the second part of course is changing your habits. So the moment you actually understand what is happening, uh, you will think twice about using a plastic bottle instead of a reusable bottle. Um, you think twice about throwing a bottle into the wild. Um, you will think twice about using plastic uh, more than necessary. 